Fridays are awesome. I'm Carl Azus, your host of CNN 10, explaining events taking place worldwide. This May 3rd, we begin in the South Asian country of India, where a powerful cyclone was expected to make landfall on Friday morning. The storm was named Fani. It had gathered strength in the Bay of Bengal the day before, and as it headed toward India's east coast, its maximum sustained winds blew at 155 miles per hour. And that would mean that tropical cyclone Fani could be the most powerful storm to hit India in 20 years. The system that struck eastern India in 1999 killed at least 10,000 people. The nation's Coast Guard and Navy prepared ships and helicopters for rescue operations. Military troops were standing by as well. Flights were canceled in the region, schools were closed, and around 900 shelters were set up to house people who had to evacuate their homes. Unlike the Atlantic hurricane season, India's cyclone season doesn't have a specific date when it begins and ends. There are two main periods of activity, one in spring and one in fall, right before and right after the country's southwest monsoon season. What's expected from Cyclone Fani is a large storm surge, a rise in sea levels along the coast where it makes landfall. Significant wind damage was also possible, and farther inland, people were preparing for the possibility of flooding. Directly in the path of the storm when we produced this show was the Indian coastal city of Puri. This is going to be a town with 240 kilometer per hour winds as the storm rolls on shore. We will see waves somewhere in the ballpark of 15 meters. We'll see storm surge between seven and nine meters as it comes on shore. Everyone in this area is in grave danger to get out of the way. They need to get away from this water, away from this wind, and into some place that is very, very strong. Now, eventually, it gets over toward Kolkata and then on up into Bangladesh, but by that time, the forward speed is moving quite fast, and so the rainfall will be more spread out. This is now going to be a devastating wind maker and storm surge maker right along the coast here of the eastern shore of India. A lot of people in the way, 100 million people will see something from this storm, whether it's wind damage, whether it's sur surge damage, or whether it's flooding. This is going to be a widespread storm, significantly stronger than we've seen in the past. Last thing was a Cat 3 that made landfall in 2014. This is equivalent to a very strong Category 4 Atlantic hurricane, only one or two miles per hour really from a Category 5. There have been a lot of developments in the South American country of Venezuela. When we put this show together, its president, Nicolas Maduro, remained in power, and its opposition leader, Juan Guaido, continued to lead protests against Maduro. In a new wave of demonstrations this week, Guaido called for the military to get involved in pushing President Maduro out of power. But afterward, Guaido admitted there wasn't enough support from the military to make that happen. And on Thursday, men and women in uniform marched alongside the president to show support for him. President Maduro also called for Venezuela's elected officials to come together this weekend in a show of unity. A Venezuelan human rights organization says four people have died in this week's violent protests. And tensions have spread internationally as well. Russia is one of the nations that support President Maduro. The U.S. is among the countries that support National Assembly leader Guaido. The Trump administration said at one point this week, Venezuela's president was planning to leave the country when Russia told him to stay put. President Maduro denied that. Both the U.S. and Russia have told each other not to interfere in the South American nation, but the Trump administration says U.S. military action there is possible if it's needed. No one knows what will happen next in the politically unstable and economically shattered country. 10 Second Trivia in what nation would you find the world's largest known cave? Vietnam, China, Malaysia, or United States? The biggest cave ever discovered is located in the Southeast Asian country of Vietnam. It was discovered by accident. In 1990, a farmer stumbled upon the cave while looking for shelter in a storm. Its entrance is so remote that he forgot the way there, and it wasn't until 18 years later that he accidentally found it again while hunting. It takes two days of hiking through the jungle just to reach the cave, and explorers recently made a tremendous discovery there.
from the depths of the earth, we're taking you to the heights of the sky. You're watching the liftoff of the New Shepard rocket, a space tourism vehicle that made a test flight over rural Texas yesterday. It was carrying dozens of research projects, but no people were on board. Blue Origin, the American company that makes the rocket, hopes to be ferrying humans to space and back in the year ahead. There wouldn't be a pilot. This rocket is fully automated. Passengers would launch up, up, and away inside the capsule. It would detach from the rocket about 62 miles over the Earth. People would get a few minutes of weightlessness while they were there, and then the capsule and the rocket would return separately to solid ground where they could both be reused on future trips. We don't know yet how much ticket prices will be. Like SpaceX, Blue Origin has received millions of dollars from NASA. It's one of several private companies hoping to bring people to space. When you think of getting cows to move, you might think of a herdsman on horseback or maybe a border collie on call. In the city of California, it was police who got the pleasure of herding a couple rogue cows recently, and the fun was caught on dash cam. It was a slow assignment right out of the gate. But what bovine way to wander into the weekend? We could call it utterly ridiculous, say it was a milk run, tell you we know where the beef is. But before we hoof it, we'll just say we milked all the puns we cud right up until the cows came home. I'm Carl Azus for CNN. 